Alright folks, welcome back to another Budget Jam More Budget Bust. Today I've got one for you from Soundstream. This is the Soundstream Picasso Nano PN1.1000D. Um, this amplifier is rated at 1000 watts at 1 ohm. And it's also rated at 350 watts by 1 at 4 ohms. And 600 watts by 1 at 2 ohms. And as you can see here, this is an open box from Amazon. I picked this up for $97, which is a pretty nice deal for a 1,000 watt monoblock. Uh, typically, you're gonna find these in the market for about $130 to $140 brand new. I've seen them as high as $150. I've seen them as low as $125. So prices vary, etc. cetera. And um, these I've heard a lot about. Um, they are one of the few Soundstream amplifiers that are made in Korea. These are the equivalent of the Precision Power Ion series and the Power Acoustic Razors. The Razors being the lower end ones, well they're all, they're all the same on the inside, but the Power Acoustic ones are rated over the moon, as you saw in one of my previous videos, and supposedly the Precision Powers and Soundstreams are supposed to be rated dead on. But that is why we do the dyno, so we can find out exactly how much power this puts out. So we are going to unbox this bad boy, and we're going to strap it up to the amp dyno and find out exactly how much power this Soundstream amplifier really does. So let's get into it. Let's just jump right in, and let's open this up. Okay, diving right in. Uh, first thing we've got right on the top, we have our Soundstream Picasso Nano owner's manual and it uh, looks like some high-level inputs we have a Epsilon special El Cheapo remote base knob complete plastic job a remote base cable and some mounting screws and one amplifier uh, pretty compact amplifier as you can see here Not that big for a thousand watt monoblock. We have got roughly, uh, looks to be about a little over 11 inches wide, a little under five inches, or I should say, a little over 11 inches long, a little over four and a half inches, uh, almost five inches wide, and roughly just under two inches tall. So, let's check her out the size of the amplifier. Along this side of the amplifier we find our power input terminals and our speaker output terminals. Um, these terminals are a little bit undersized so as you can see here I'm going to try to use a 4 gauge reducer. Soundstream says these are 4 gauge inputs. This is a 4 gauge reducer and it does not fit at all. Um, it hits right along a metal ring that's along the inside here that you can see. So this is probably more like a six gauge, if that even exists. Um, you might be able to get four gauge in if you squeeze it in um, with raw wire, but you're not gonna be able to fit a four gauge reducer at all. Um, along the other side, Soundstream says these are eight gauge speaker outputs. Again, eight gauge reducer and it does fit no problem. So you can use 8K speaker outputs. And of course, fusing here is 40 amps uh, each times two for 80 amps total. Along this side of the amplifier, you're gonna find your different settings uh, and your RCA inputs, as well as your high, high input adapter, which is right here. Here are your RCAs. Your gain, which is adjustable from six volts down to 0.2 volts you have your subsonic filter which is adjustable from 10 hertz to 50 hertz bass boost who cares no one should use that and of course your low pass filter which is a which is variable from looks like 35 hertz all the way up to 250 hertz and of course your remote gain output is right there looking at the guts this is a pretty nicely laid out Korean amplifier. It's got a really nice heat sink along the top of the MOSFETs here. There is a, a, 
clear plastic top on here to prevent any shorting out uh, over these uh, Samoa capacitors, which are 85 degrees, 75 volts uh, capacitors, and 4700 microfarad. So, uh, not bad looking on the inside. Okay, nothing left to do but to uh, strap this supposed 1000 watt monoblock amplifier up to the amp dyno and find out exactly how much power this little amp puts out. Is it overrated? Is it underrated? Is it rated dead on? We're going to find out right now. Okay, folks, final thoughts here on the Soundstream Picasso Nano PN1.1000D. Um, yeah, so we failed to hit any of our ratings. Um, only way I got a thousand watts out of this is when I put it dynamically down at 0.8 ohms. And uh, yeah, so does it meet the budget gem or bust guideline well it is you know it's over 80 percent of its rated power but i gotta disqualify it because it does not come out on top when it comes to cost per watt um and of course it missed all its ratings so unfortunately soundstream this is a budget bust which is too bad because it's really not a bad amplifier so if you own one of these, don't feel terrible about it. I mean, you're not going to really hear too much of a difference between 800 watts and 1,000 watts. Um, it'll be probably less than 1 dB, maybe 1.5 dB tops of a difference, which you're not going to be able to tell. Um, the efficiency wasn't bad, not 
not great, not bad. Um, and again, it's a Korean-made amp and probably gonna last a while, especially for a sound stream. So again, don't feel bad about this, but it just, there was no reason for Soundstream to lie about this amp, yet they still lied about it. It's really an 800 watt amp, and quite frankly, for 140 bucks, there are other 800 watt amps I would recommend over this one. Specifically, the Pioneer 8601. I mean, for 140 bucks, I mean, I'd rather have the uh, audio pipe APMI 1500. For $27 more, you can get double the wattage. You can get the APMI 2000. There's just so many other amps I would rather have at this price point than this one. Heck, the Soundcube S1 uh, 1250 is not far off from this either, and that's a better amp than this. So, yeah, we have a first budget bust in a while. A little disappointed, but uh, hey, that's why we do this. We find out what's good, what's bad. So that's it for now, folks. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I got more amps to test. I'll see you next time.